What's Ham Radio? Greetings. I'm Jim W6LG, as you can tell by the call sign growing out of the back of my head. Hi, I'm Jim W6LG for Ham Radio Basics. Welcome to my radio room here on Wolf Mountain. Can you CQ? Three run, Whiskey 6 Lima Golf, W6LG. Whiskey 6 Lima Golf, QRZ Europe. Six LG for Ham Radio Basics. Welcome to my radio room here on Wolf Mountain. I've gotten a bunch of emails and comments on some of the videos about what's Ham Radio. The most recent one is a college student out of I think it's New York, and he's an engineering student. Never heard of it. Had no idea what it was, but now has an interest. So. This might be a good time to talk about a subject that um, I've wanted to cover anyway, and that is ham radio as a hobby. I'd like us to change that from ham radio as a hobby to we're an amateur radio service, a licensed amateur radio service. It certainly has aspects of a hobby, and there's tons and tons and tons of things you can do with a ham radio license that... Um, are certainly interesting and fun and educational but I think we need to emphasize that we're a licensed amateur radio service uh, so that we can keep our frequencies the frequency we the frequencies that we have could be easily taken away if we're thought of as just a hobby a hobby doesn't need 80 40 and 20 meters um, maybe it doesn't need any of the HF frequencies um, there certainly could be an attack on those frequencies by some company and their position might be well it's just a hobby they don't need those frequencies um, and I, I don't want to see us lose uh, the HF bands who would want them I don't have a clue but let's just for a second pretend that a company wanted them and let's say it was a delivery service doesn't matter who and so they wanted the HF frequency so they could cover hills and valleys and canyons and all kinds of things with uh, their drone delivery gizmos. Imagine them going to a congressman and saying, in, in your district, Mr. Congress, there's 200 ham radio operators and there's 200,000 of my customers. Um, we need those frequencies. So how does the FCC view amateur radio and what do they say about it? Well, it's covered in Part 97 of the uh, Rules and Regulations, and it actually is uh, quite a compliment. Um, part 97 says in the first sentence, the Rules and Regulations in this part are designed to provide an amateur radio service having a fundamental purpose as expressed in the following principles. And it lists five principles, and I'll just briefly cover them, except for the first one, which I'll read in detail. Recognition and enhancement of the value of the amateur radio service to the public as a voluntary non-commercial service, particularly with respect to providing emergency communications. And we certainly do that well. We do that better than anybody else. Um, continuation expansion of the radio art. Um, providing skills in, in the uh, technical aspects of the art, uh, expansion of existing trained operators, technicians, and electronics experts, and lastly, the con continuation and extension of the amateur's unique ability to enhance international goodwill, and we certainly do that very well. Uh, we, we talk to countries that our government doesn't talk to, and in often very friendly tones and uh, in a fraternal situation. Um, for example, hams in the United States have talked to Cuba for decades and made friends with a lot of them, uh, even though our two countries did not get along for a very long time, and now it looks like all that has changed. So to answer the email, what is ham radio? Well, it's the amateur radio service. We are licensed and we have privileges. Ham radio is a myriad of things. I can't 
recite all the things that a ham radio operator can do or that a group of ham radio operators do. In my local community, there are guys that do all kinds of things, whether it's digital communications, uh, moon bounce, sending their signal to the moon and back, uh, talking to satellites, um, conversing with people on the, on the other side of the planet, um, building sophisticated antenna arrays, all kinds of things. Uh, and at the top of that list is probably providing a network for emergency communications. Many, many ham radio operators in my community have spent a lot of money building the infrastructure, training locals to use it, setting it up. And let me tell you, uh, more than once it's paid big dividends. Uh, in 1988, that was the year of the 49er fire here in Nevada County. It burned 33,000 acres. It burned from one end of the county, and I watched it out a window, all the way down to the other end of the county, turned around and came back and burned what it didn't burn the first time. It lasted for about 10 days. Uh, a group of over 100 ham radio operators, all licensed, all very skilled, all did an excellent job. Um, was organized and run by, uh, in, in part, uh, a CDF fire captain, uh, Charlie Jacobs, uh, KC6LKC, and uh, they did stuff that just made it possible for CDF to track a, a lot of things, like the progress of the fire. Um, we had a local guy, uh, Grover, Grover Cleveland, who when a certain area was not accessible by a VHF, he put a, re a repeater up on the hill and got it covered. So, um, and by the way, during that fire, we lost about 350 homes, and it was just a terrible fire. But the ham radio operators over and over and over again provided emergency communications, progress on the fire, just a myriad of things. Uh, it wasn't just handling... Uh, this group needs food at the fairgrounds, it was important communications. And oftentimes, um, the uh, ham radio operator that was assigned to maybe a battalion chief or a fire captain had his uh, VHF, UHF handheld in one hand and the CAL FIRE handheld in the other. And while that guy was a shadow and pretty much invisible, uh, he operated the equipment so that the battalion chief or fire captain or, captain or whomever could have been a member of the Board of Supervisors, could have been um, uh, the uh, county administrator. Uh, everybody was involved. And a lot of them had a ham radio shadow who provided communications, and it just worked incredibly well. So in trying to define ham radio, it's kind of difficult. Uh, we provide emergency communications, and we do it exceptionally well. Uh, the number of hams in the country, I think, is about 300,000. And over and over and over again, we've proven our worth to uh, the government, and that's the reason why we have those frequencies. If you have any questions or if you have some input, uh, put it below. Uh, I'm sure somebody would love to answer it. I'll, I'll try if I can. Uh, if you have a suggestion for an upcoming video, let me know. I've got a few in, in the works. If you're interested in amateur radio, uh, the ARRL is a place to go, and you can Google that and find them, uh, find them on the web. Thanks for joining me. I've been a ham radio operator since 1963, and um, when I was 14 years old, I'm now 67, and I've operated during that whole time. And It's been a life-changing thing for me in, in many respects, and it's, it's not only been a lot of fun, but I've learned a great deal, and I've, I've met people from all over the world. It's amazing. So, in Ham Radio Jargon 73, thanks for joining me. I'm Jim, W6LG. See you the next time.